Suppose I have 4 to the second power divided by 4 to the third power. Let's look at what that means. It means 4 times 4 over 4 times 4 times 4. OK, if I wanted to, I could say 4 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 4 times 1. So this really could be expressed as, I could say this is 4 over 4 times 4 over 4. I'm kind of grouping these numbers times 1 over 4. So this is just 1 fourth. And as you know, 4 is the same thing as 4 to the first power. So this is 1 over 4 to the first power. What if it was the other way around? What if it was the larger number on top? Let's say I was looking at, well, let's use a different number. Let's use 3, 3 to the fifth power divided by 3 to the third power. All right? This is going to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 all over 3 times 3 times 3. Now, if I want, I could put times 1, because anything times 1 is itself. So I can add the times 1 on the denominator. It won't change the value. So again, I could group these. Here, this is 3 over 3, which is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. This is 3 over 3, which is 1. And this is 3 over 3, which is 1. And I'm left with 3 times 3, which is 9, over 1, which is 9. Or I could have said 3 to the second power over 1, which is just 3 to the second power. Now let's take a look at the numerical relationship that we've generated here. 3 to the fifth divided by 3 to the third turned out to be 3 to the second. So how could we have gotten to this answer from the original problem? If you notice, it's the same thing as 3 to the power that you get when you say 5 minus 3, which is 2, 3 to the second power. And that is indeed how we can do a problem of this kind. We, if the numbers are big and you can't write it out or see it intuitively that way, it's just the top num that is, as long as the base is the same, you take the top exponent and subtract the bottom one, and that's the answer. Now, what would have happened here if we did that? We would have had 4, 4 to the second, minus 3, which is equal to 4 to the negative 1. OK, but what we got for our answer was 1 over 4 to the positive 1. So now I'm going to tell you that we have a definition that a negative exponent is the same thing as 1 over the same thing with a positive exponent. So in other words, 4 to the minus 1 is equal to 1 over 4 to the 1, which is also just called 1 over 4. OK? So now let's apply that rule to some other numbers. Suppose we had a to the b over a to the c. What would that be equal to? That's a to the b minus c. Suppose we had 6 to the third divided by 6 to the eighth. That equals 6 to the 3 minus 8, which is 6 to the negative 5, which is 1 over 6 to the fifth power. Check it out. This is 6 times 6 times 6, 3 times. This is 6 times 6, 6 multiplied by itself 8 times. So if we did that, we'd go 1, 2, 3 over. I got eight of them. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sixes. So you can see I can group three of them together because anything over itself is one. And I have one over, I have five more left on the bottom. So it's one over six to the fifth, which by definition is also called six to the negative fifth. Now sometimes we have numbers that we're working with all the way through. And sometimes we've got letters that we're working with. And sometimes we have a combination of the two. Just depends on how the expression and the problem was given to you. So let's look at a couple other problems. So b to the third over b squared is b to the 3 minus 2, which is b to the 1, which is just plain old b. c to the seventh divided by c to the fourth is c to the 7 minus 4, which is c to the third, right? d to the eighth over d to the Twelfth is d to the 8 minus 12, which is d to the negative 4. And that's an answer. Or I could call it 1 over d to the 4. That's an answer. Sometimes in some problems, this might be the form in which your teacher wants you to answer a problem. And sometimes it might be like this. It just depends on kind of the context and what you're doing in the problem. All right, what if you have something like this, b to the negative x? You've got a base that's a letter standing for any number, and you've got an exponent that's also a letter, which could stand for any number. How could you express this differently? Well, it's the same thing as 1 over b to the positive x, because this is the definition, essentially, of a negative exponent. If you move it from the numerator and put the whole expression in the denominator, you change the exponent from a negative to a positive. OK, I think that's all for our video on exponents. Thank you.